Hello everybody, welcome to our webinar this afternoon. Uh, my name is Kyrie Murphy, I'm coming to you from Renningen today. Uh, give you a bit of a rundown of our activities. Uh, we will be introducing the insertion system. So this is a little bit different system uh, to most of the things we offer. Uh, our webinar today will be differing a little bit, perhaps in more detail about the, the system because it's not what we would consider the basic system. Uh, to give you a bit of a rundown for the proceedings, I will we'll be introducing some of our products. We have a little scale here, and perhaps you can see um, some, some samples here. We'll then be handing over to a colleague of mine, Roman. Uh, he'll be running through some of our online material and showing our software K2 base. Following this, we'll have a bit of time for a question and answer round. So if you've had some questions or you'd like to um, ask or make a comment, uh, ask us or make a comment about the webinar, we will be able to turn your microphone on and you can ask directly myself or Roman. Uh, alternatively, if you have questions throughout the webinar, there's an option to use a Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. So you should have three little buttons, a hand, a chat and a Q&A. Please use the Q&A for any questions you have. So if you say, how do we, how do, what sizes are these for? Or how do I install this? or something like that, please use the Q&A function. If you just have a general comment about not being able to hear or something's going wrong, uh, you can use the chat for that. But please use all technical questions. For all technical questions, please use the Q&A. Before we go too much further, I'd like to introduce my colleague, as I said, Roman. Roman Bile, he's also working in technical sales. Um, Roman, could you give a brief introduction to maybe yourself and, and what you'll be doing today? Hey, everyone. Hey, nice hey, to see Roman. you again. Uh, my name is Roman. I'll be joining today for the online part. We'll have the pleasure to do some planning together in our base software. It's a planning tool. I'll introduce you to the software. And for those of you who have worked with it, I hope I can help you out with some more new information. And well, if not, if you have any other questions, we'll be here for you. Um, I'll be answering the questions while Karen is um, explaining some other stuff. So feel free to ask them in the Q&A section. And yeah, I think that's from my side for now. I'll get back to Karen and we'll see us later. Have fun, everyone. Thanks, Roman. Uh, so just before we get started, uh, we have a, a quick poll uh, that we'd like to run for everyone today. So this is just a few quick questions that we can use to focus our detail in the information we give or perhaps make it a bit more uh, basic depending on the level of knowledge that our attendees, uh, you for example, already have. So I will just um, set that up now. Um, wow, this is all in German. Can I run Karen, this? Karen, I will help you out with this. Yeah. Don't worry, I'll start the poll. No, thanks. All right, everyone, I hope you guys are ready. The first question, do you use K2Base regularly? So this might be a couple of times a month or um, do you come back to it often? Do you know, do you feel you know your way around it, for example? All right. So many people have probably attended already in the webinars. We have also 72% use percent which have used base before or using it regularly. That's good. Next question. Did you ever use a K2 mounting system? A pretty quick one. Have you purchased it before, used it before? All right, not too many newbies here. I think we're good there, Roman, to move to the next one. All right. So about Next, the same. And last one, and which is a multiple choice question. Uh, which K2 mounting system do you use mostly if you have used one? Yeah, so here you're able to answer multiple questions or multiple answers, sorry. Let's give me a few more seconds on this one, Karen. I think then we'll be good to start. All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks a bit. Yep. So All pretty, right. yeah, pretty varied, but uh, always good to see. Yeah, thanks, Roman. Uh, 
And thank you everyone for participating. Can I change my camera? Yeah, Thanks also from my uh, side. Okay, have fun guys. Uh, yeah, so as Roman said, um, if you have any questions um, and you put them in the Q&A section, he'll be able to answer them or perhaps he might stop me and we can go over some of the stuff a bit more detail. So insertion system, uh, we have just a bit of a model up here. Uh, this is the rail that we will be looking at today. So it looks very different to some of our other rails that you may have seen if you have used our products before. Uh, often you'll think the channel would be something like this uh, and you'll see on top, but this is effectively flipped 90 degrees. So it's quite a different system. Uh, just to give you an idea of, of the product first, I'd like to just show it off. So you all have that in mind. Um, and as you can imagine, because it sits in a different orientation, uh, the fixation is a little bit different. So we'll go over that today. And we'll also go over um, maybe some of the advantages or when you might like to use it or why you might like to use it um, and hopefully answer some of your questions. So that was just to give you an idea of what we're talking about. Um, this is our insertion rail. So insertion rail, as I said, runs the other way to perhaps some of our other rails. And so getting it onto the roof is a little bit different uh, to how we use our single rail or our solid rail systems. Um, well, we actually utilize the single and solid rail system. So there's not a direct fixation from the insertion rail to the roof. We utilize the solid rail system. So but there were a few new people um, in the webinar today. So the solid rail system, I have a sample here as well. Um, and so this is what we, one of our more standard rails we use. So we use this for our uh, tile roofs, uh, corrugated uh, sheeting roofs, uh, trapezoidal sheeting. Uh, it's, it's, we can use it in cross bracing, flat roofs. So it's um, very, wide ranging its use, um, fixation comes underneath. Uh, and then for our standard systems, clamps would sit on top. However, for this system, we use a, a bit of a different setup, which we'll go through first. So yeah, this is the solid rail and this is what we fix to the roof. So we have a few different ways of, of doing that. Uh, so depending on the type of roof that we have. So we have tile roofs, we have hanger bolts, have an example here for uh, trapezoidal uh, sheet metal roofs. We have a, a very similar rail. So this is multi-rail, but you can see it looks very similar to the solid rail. This sits directly onto the trapezoidal sheeting. And we also have another fixation for trapezoidal um, fixations, trapezoidal roofs, sorry, that connects to the under construction of the roof. So this one just sits on top but we can go a bit further and drill into the uh, drill into the subconstruction. So we're not going to go into too much detail about our hanger bolts or our, um, or our roof tiles today. Um, as long as the system can function with the solid rail or with the multi-rail, which I had here, uh, then the system is suitable for the uh, insertion system. So saying that, how do we get from our insertion system? How do we get, sorry, our insertion system on to our solid rail? So whether you have the hanger bolts or the, or the tile roofs, um, it doesn't, doesn't really matter, but how do we get from the solid rail onto the, how do we get the insertion rail, sorry, onto the solid rail uh, is a little bit different to most of our other systems. We don't really have clamps per se. We have a fixation that sticks to the solid rail uh, and then we connect the insertion rail to that. So this is our, this is the tool or the, the piece we use to connect the insertion rail to the solid rail. The way you see it now is effectively the inclination of the roof. So up, up here is the top side of the roof and down here the bottom. Uh, this is clamped on using our uh, K2 slot nuts or a slight adaptation of the K2 slot nut, but it just sits underneath the underneath the um, uh, the fixation point, and then you're able to with a hex nut 
place that on top. Just have the, another version here. Uh, they're all already fixed out. And screw down uh, using the hex nut here and just tighten that with a, um, I think a standard, I think it's an eight mil, an eight mil nut. So that sits on the rail um, fixed to the tightness that is specified in our assembly instructions. Um, Roman will hopefully show you where you find the assembly instructions and how to, um, and, and where to find this information. Attaching then the insertion rail. So we're still in this inclination. Uh, we just place the rail on top. You see there's a little um, clip here. So this acts as a bit of a spring. Uh, it's very, very firm, um, but it just sits on top. Uh, we're then able to push and slide. And this now allows no movement sort of up and down the roof. So there is still a bit of movement within the roof. This floats effectively. And this is something that we also, um, we also consider. So we'll flip over to the back in the moment, but just to give you an idea, uh, the system is not entirely loose, but in the direction of the roof, very little movement or no movement. And then in the other direction, we fix in a different way. So now we're on the underside, uh, we have two of these uh, that just sit, to unscrew, sorry, before we can put it in. Uh, and so these sit either side of the insertion rail on the base underneath, we can slide in. Uh, perhaps with the system, you would like a little bit of space, uh, just a tad to allow the rail to move a little bit with thermal expansion. Um, so you can give it a bit of, and then as you tighten due to the dimension of the, uh, the piece that sits in here, it will lock as this is like a clockwise tightening, it locks with it. So if we now flip over, there is a slight amount of movement, or if you'd like, you can tighten it even further. However, um, to allow for a bit of thermal expansion, it's a good idea to give it just a tad, a bit of space. I'm not sure if this measurement is actually given in the instructions, but uh, I know it's, uh, it's a good idea to, to do. So this is on a, on a bit of a small scale. I'd like to now um, pan out to our section at the back and then we see how how this is going to work on a on a larger scale so we've maybe on a bit larger would be yeah this is a bit better so here we have two of the insertion rails already set up um, one at the top one at the bottom and excuse me um, and a couple of modules um, that have been or the, the rails have been set up for these specific modules uh, here we have another one. Installation is uh, very simple with the modules. They slide into the top and then slide down a little bit. So, yeah, tell me if we could get a bit closer. So there is a little bit of space up the top. However, there is a lip on this top side here. Uh, I'll show the profile in a little bit to give a bit more of an idea, um, but there is a bit of space. So the module cannot come out. Remove the module, uh, probably the most simple system to remove. We're able to slide up and then slide out. So we can do that again quite easily. And so the weight of gravity just pulls the module down. It sits in the lip in the bottom and then the overhang on top uh, stops the module coming out. So for roofs with quite low degrees, uh, I think 12 degrees, if your roof inclination is 12 or less, uh, you maybe or you are required to uh, put some material in. Uh, I have one here actually. 
put some material in uh, to stop that movement because there is a chance that it will slide up a little bit uh, at, the, at the really low degrees. Um, and so to do that, uh, we can put in our, um, our terror grip. So these act in two ways. Oh, so I have two benefits here. Let's go this way, it's better lighting. Uh, the first purpose is actually to allow electrical connection between the rail and hopefully then a bond, uh, an electrical plan that your roof might have. Uh, sorry, the rail can then be connect connected to an existing plan that the roof might have, or uh, perhaps you might need to build that um, independently. Um, but in this case, it also acts as a, an extra force, uh, which just sort of clamps the module up. So you can see these are really stiff. So as the module uh, sits in, it's then stuck, effectively stuck with these little teeth and also pushed up a little bit into the, the roof. And so this stops any movement back up and will stop the modules coming out. While we are on here, we can just have a look at the profile again of the module. So this side, it sits, if we imagine the roof, the roof is a bit like this. This side is the, the bottom. And so the module will slide in here and then sit down a little bit. And then the overhang of this lip here holds the module in place. The module on top doesn't require such a lip uh, because it will sit in and be held with gravity. And so it allows, or it, is, it has, sorry, a little bit of a smaller lip. So you can see there, they're just the different sizes between the two. And this allows for easy installation, but also a secure fixation of the modules without, uh, without clamping per se. So there is still a little bit of movement in the modules back and forth. You saw, you might've seen that when we installed and to stop the modules coming out. Uh, on the other end, we have a, a stopper or an end point uh, effectively. This is screwed in uh, on the bottom. And it just sits at the end of the rail and ensures that the modules uh, won't slide out. There is one, another point that we have, which I don't think I've showed, which you might've just seen. So we have a, a cable manager, which sits under the rails and this utilizes the, the little bit of space that sits here. So this design underneath is firstly for the fixation between the solid rail and the uh, insertion rail, but also um, allows for a little bit of space uh, for a cable tray. So this is a small cable. I think you can fit up four, five or six cables in this cable tray. Uh, and it means that you're not worrying about cables underneath the uh, flying around on other modules or sitting loose, you're able to put them all in uh, this little tray. And so it's just a piece of plastic effectively, easy to come out and, um, or easy to put in and take back out. Um, it's a bit stiff, so it's not just gonna fall out, uh, but it is quite simple to install and um, uninstall. And hmm, what else do we have? Oh, so our insertion rails, oh, I'm not sure what lengths our insertion rails come in. Maybe Roman can show that in our base program. It'll tell you exactly which ones you can buy and which ones you can't, um, but they come in certain lengths. And so you're able to put together a module field up to uh, 21 meters for depending on the roof. Um, so depending on the type of roof, so 21 meters in one direction um, for one type of roof and 17 meters in the same direction for a different type of roof. So this information is important to be aware of, but not necessarily really important to, to know before you're planning because our uh, K2 system, our K2 base software will stop you doing something you can't do. So something to be aware during installation, but throughout your planning, uh, you don't have to worry about it too much uh, because there are things in place to stop you doing something that shouldn't be built. Uh, but I got a little bit off track. So you are able to build up to 20 meters. Let's say the, the rail comes in 4.4 meter lengths. Uh, you need to be able to connect it in different ways. So we have a, a rail connector 
for the insertion rail. Um, and we have it for, well, we have rail connectors for all our rails, but specifically for our insertion rail today. Uh, I'll just like to show that. So here we have the one before, um, still connected in. That's we'll this way just to show that there is a little notch. Uh, so this means it'll only sit in halfway, a little bit less than halfway. And then lining up the rail uh, on the other side, able to connect. So, and then there's, there's a little bit of movement here now, but however, the rail on my, or I don't know, on, on my right, I'm not sure if your right or your left, will also be clamped. So there's not going to be, um, there's not going to be the movement that's shown here, let's say. Roman, uh, that was, I think, all of my toys I had to show off. Was there any questions uh, that we could answer or any more detail we could go into? Yes, hand over? thanks, Karen. Um, there was a question before, but I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, you were just in the flow. Um, so the first question was, is it available in, in which different colors and also which different lengths and maybe which sizes of the module frame? Did oh, you say yes. that maybe already or not? But if not, can you please repeat this? Yeah, no, so I didn't think I touched on any of that actually. So um, thanks for the question. So our rails, uh, our insertion rail, as well as all of our other rails are suitable, are suitable, are purchasable uh, in a mill finish aluminium, which is this one here, but also an anodized or black anodized coating. So, um, yeah, black or silver in a very short way of answering. So that means if you have black module frames, we can have it in black. Yeah. So if you like, one of the big advantages of the insertion system is the aesthetics of it. It looks a lot nicer. Um, and so if you are going for like a, a nice looking solar design, that's what you're you're looking for. It's always good to have. Um, your module frames matching your rails. And so, yeah, as Roman said, if you have black module frames, black rails, if you have silver module frames, the silver is probably what you're looking for. Um, depth wise, so we have three available um, depths. So for modules of 30 millimeters, um, 25 millimeters, sorry, 30 millimeters, 35 millimeters, and 40 millimeters, um, they're suitable. And so it's a little bit different. Uh, the, the idea of the module is much, sorry, the idea of the rail is much the same. The fixation is the same. It's just this distance in here is a little bit shorter or longer, depending on the module uh, lengths you, uh, you require or the module depth you require. And the other point on the lengths uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Um, but as I think I can help out with this. Yeah. Um, the, so the 30 millimeter frame height, which is very new, has a length of 5.4 meter and the 35 and 40 are available in 5.10 meter. Okay. Yeah. So. Thank you. Okay. And, and that will be on base, won't it? You'll be able to show true, that. True. Later. You don't need to have this in your head and in your mind because base will help you out with this anyways. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next question is just coming up from Jeremy. Uh, he say, thanks, great webinar. Um, is the insertion work system working with single rail as well? Um, no. So in theory, you could like the plant, the components do go together. However, it's not a um, system that we offer. Okay. So um, it's not possible. I hope you just hear this. Um, set next question, or well, it was just something that you can do. If you can show again how to slide the module in. Can you yep. just uh, right. do this again, please? Especially about the disassembling. This, yeah, okay. So that was just quickly, but so here we have like a loose one. As I said, there is that movement side to side. And because of that, uh, Tillman, maybe if you um, could have a look at the top first. So first we slide in up the top and then 
tell me, you know, we have a look at the bottom. So you see here, there is a bit of space still. And so obviously the distance between this uh, insertion system rail and the one up the top is very important. Uh, and then it, it just sits back in. And so at the bottom, it's sitting at the base. And then tell me you know, if we could look at the top again. It is caught by that overhanging lip that I discussed earlier. So probably, well, I would say the easiest system to install like the modules themselves, uh, because there's once the rails are set up, the module installation is just that. There's not nothing to tighten, nothing to um, to fix. The distances aren't really an issue. It's all being set up beforehand. In saying that. Uh, I'm not in saying that, just another point while we're here. This is in like a portrait setup, or it isn't a portrait setup, sorry, not like a portrait setup, uh, but it's also possible in uh, a landscape. So if our rails were closer together, uh, we could do much the same. Or installation would be exactly the same. We would just slide in the top, push down, and then it would fall down a little bit. So. Thanks for sharing this information. This would have been the next question coming up. Um, but then we can just jump on. Um, the next question from Gear is uh, any constraints for snow load? So do you have any information about that? Um, well, I'm not entirely sure. So the modules in landscape are held with more points as, it, as it's continuous rail than, than they are without other clamps. So for example, other clamps usually held only on four locations. Um, so we usually stand on like the corner, on the, like here and here, here and here. Uh, and so there is more space of the module touching the rail and therefore the load is spread a little bit better. Uh, because the insertion system is better at higher inclinations as i said before anything less than 12 uh it's you require a bit more um or you require extra components to to ensure that it doesn't slide out uh the snow loads at the higher inclinations of the roof aren't generally as much of an issue what may you may find is that the modules themselves are not suitable for high snow loads at these higher um and, and sort of more extreme conditions. However, this is something that the modules, module provider or module data sheet will show. Um, but in terms of exact numbers, I'm not sure. If there is a concern with the material from K2 side, uh, there will be a warning in our K2 based software saying uh, that there is too much load, whether that be snow load or wind load. Uh, for the material. So this is another thing that K2 Base shows uh, is that when our components are, have too much load on them and, and they're not rated and have not been tested for uh, loads in this situation. So that was a bit of a rambling answer, I'm sorry. Uh, in general, yes, there are situations where it won't be suitable, uh, um, but with every system that is the same. And with this system, you have larger area, so there's a chance that the loads will be not an issue with the insertion rail, but an issue with maybe the fixation or some other point of the system will, uh, will be the impacting or the limiting factor on how much loads they can take. Thank you, Karen. That was deep in detail, but that was very well explained, I have to say. Um, the next question, um, can you please show again what stops the module from sliding out of the row end? Not really a question, but just something you have to show again, if possible. Yeah. So these are, um, so we'll go back this way, uh, our pterogryphs. Uh, so these are, if you've used some other K2 products, you might have seen them before uh, as they are used for material, sorry, as I said, they're used for electrical connection um, before they're used for this purpose. Uh, so Tim, we can just zoom in a little bit on that as well. Um, I was going to try to take one out, but the teeth on them are pretty sharp and I don't want to cut myself. Yeah. So these, um, the purpose of the teeth or the primary purpose of the teeth is to, if 
especially if you have black modules, uh, to scratch through the anodized section and ensure that there's electric that ensure that there is electrical potential or connection, sorry, um, between the rail, which it's cl clips to very strongly, and the module. So, as I said before, uh, the say like the safety and of the system and the um, like. Uh, if, especially if you're on a flat roof system, lightning strikes, you want to ensure that there is uh, a earthing and bonding um, system on your roof. And this is a way of integrating the solar panels and the, so the PV system uh, into that existing system. Or as I said, uh, you may need to build one uh, entirely new. But something to definitely consider with any PV setup. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. But also, you were just showing the one to slide out on, the, like the very end of the of the rail. That's what you were just showing. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, this is the uh, the end point we have, or the end plate we have here. Uh, is just fixed with a. Maybe I can undo that as well. Not with that one though. Okay, I don't think I have a tool for undoing this one. I thought it was the same size. My apologies. Um, it's just very simple. It's just one bolt, pretty much, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, we just screw in, tighten this, and then um, it fits. It sits in there snugly. And then okay. you can see there, there's enough space on either side. So the module, if we're, we're in this direction now, the top module sit here, and it's not getting past there. Yeah, we, and we can show it on the on the big one. Um, okay. I here, think that. This this is pretty clear, Karen. Let's move on to the next question. Okay. Sorry for uh, interrupting, but the time is running as well. Yeah. So um, the next question was about the single rail again. You were just showing a roof hook. What's the difference for this roof hook and the ones with the single rail? We saw that there is a long hole, an elongated hole in this roof hook. Can you please explain a little bit about this? Yeah. Because, um, we have to go more a bit about the single rail, why this doesn't work. Yeah, uh, I don't think we have a version for single rail, but just to have a look at this version. So this version is for solid rail. There is a slight difference between roof hooks. Uh, so here we have a, uh, a cross hook 3S three, um, three plus, uh, plus for a, meaning a long hole. Uh, this allows for the solid rail to sit on here. Uh, with that T-bolt, T-bolt sits on here and is tightened from underneath and sits down. So the uh, the single rail uses a slightly different uh, setup here. There is a, a climber set, and so we call ourselves. Uh, if sorry, if this was the cross hook for the single rail, it's the cross hook 3S plus plus a climber, um, and this is a different component that sits here. And then the single rail runs in this direction. And so if the single rail runs in this direction, the same uh, direction as the insertion rail, then there is no way to fix the insertion rail to the single rail. And so especially for tile roofs, that's why the solid rail uh, has to be used. And it's because of the direction of the rail, the direction the solid rail can go. Um, yeah, so that's probably the main reason why we cannot use the the, the single rail. Um, and that is, I'm sorry, I don't have an exam, a different example of the, the cross hook, but that is why we um, have, that's why we use this cross hook. So we do a, a webinar on a single rail and solid rail with tile roofs. I think there'll be one in two weeks, but there is one on, there should be one online as well. So if you want more information on that, and we go into a lot more detail about the hooks, because uh, we have quite a range of other hooks as well, I encourage you to sign up for that or, or check the ones out that are already there. Um, but yeah, I won't go into too much more detail about the hooks today. Okay, thanks, Karen. I think that was very clear now. Um, the main reason is that it's just uh, horizontal and not vertical with the single rail. Yeah. Okay, I think that was about it with the questions we can answer right now. Um, do you have anything to add? 
Anything else you want uh, to I show? No, I don't think so. I will hand over to you for, for your part. All right, then. And it's my pleasure to start up with the online part. Okay, look forward to it. Okay, so um, we will start now. I will just share my screen. Um, I will be showing where to find useful information. Kyron was talking about before, uh, just like the uh, simple instruction, how to fix it and where, how, how uh, strong like the torque and which screws and bolts you have to fasten and how does it work. So we start with this on our website and then we will continue with the K2 base software. Um, I'll just start sharing my screen now and you will be seeing my screen right now. I think it starts now. Um, so we are on our website. So just this is basic, K2, uh, this is K2, our website. And for us, we have to switch into English today. And this is what we do right here on the top right. Switch to English. We have many more languages as you see here, but uh, for today, we're good with English. So uh, what do we do? We have today, we have the, um, we have uh, to find the, in the assembly instruction for the insertion system. So we go on the first um, page, which is, which is the product, click onto the product, and then we have to decide up front, are we planning on a trapezoidal sheet, on a tile roof, or on a corrugated sheet metal. That's always different, but we know this probably up front, which kind of roof it will be. So now we will just um, decide it's a tile roof for now. Click onto tile roofing, and we see we have the option between single rail, solid rail, and there it comes up a whole different system, which is the insertion system. Don't worry, a lot of ways coming to the insertion system, because if you go to the corrugated sheet metal, you will have probably the same assembly instruction later on. This is all fixed in one. And this is what I'm gonna show now. So once we click on the insertion system, we have some information and photos about how does it work and which parts we need. Uh, all the useful information online, but also in the assembly instruction. And this is where we find it. It's the download section, click right here. It scrolls down right to the download section, and there we can decide, do we want to download some of the product data sheets, accessories, parts, or the assembly instruction checklist. So today, I will show you again about the assembly instruction. And here we can see, because now we are in the insertion system page, so we can decide between, do we have a tile roof, so tiles, or corrugated roofing, depends do we have hanger balls or roof hooks? Or if not, we have the option about the trapezoidal sheet, then we click on this one, but um, I will go through with one right now and we decided to have tiles. So that's why I'm gonna open, sorry, this was the wrong one, open the English version of this one. So this is the insertion system, it looks just like every other assembly instruction for us. Um, all the useful and necessary information to know right on the top pages you see which tools you need to know what the requirements are for the roof and then it just goes on with so here are the requirements and then it just goes on which parts you need for the whole system um, those are the components for example with the tile roof you need the roof hooks and you see here this is just a cross hook 3s plus or 4s plus as Karen was just showing and then you continue with um, the T-bolt and the solid rail. Next page would be just the same, except we don't have the roof hooks. We do have the hanger bolt right here. Also the T-bolt the and the solid rail. Um, once we continue scrolling down a little bit, I hope you guys see it well. If we can zoom a little bit more to make it more clear. This is how to prepare the tiles or how to fix the hanger bolt. Also the torque, how strong you have to tighten it up. Also right here with 60 newton meter, for example. Um, it's all the information you need to know. I think that was what Kyron was mentioning before. I'm trying to find this. Here we go, here it is. This is the fixation on the solid rail, the, the crossing between the insertion system and the solid rail. And this is 
Kyron, you were talking about this before, I think. The torque for this is 60 newton meter as well. So all the information you see is right here. It's, right, it's written in the assembly instruction. And especially, it's very simple explained. So I think I don't need to go deeper into this detail. Kyron was showing it even better than the assembly instruction, in my opinion. Um, I think we're good here then. So we can continue with K2 base. So again, our website, if you need to find any information, you will find it right here. Click on product and continue with the type of roof you have. Before I continue, Kyron, are there any questions about this? Uh, not for, yeah, not from yours or not about what you're talking about. Um, man, I, that sentence was clear, sorry. Uh, no, I think you should keep going. There's a few more, but we can answer them towards the end, I think. Okay, I will just continue with the base calculation and we come back to these questions then. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, cool. So then I'll continue. Um, today we are planning um, where it's a bit warmer. We were having a project in Barcelona today, so in Spain, just to change it up a little bit. We did some planning already in Belgium. We did some planning in Sweden in all these previous webinars. Today we're going a bit south, so in Spain today. Uh, I did the pre-planning of the roofs already. And I did, especially today, I did two roofs uh, because I want to show you how it works with the tire roofing and then also with the trapezoidal sheet. So we start with the first one. Um, all the information you have to type in here, which are, the, those are the information you need to have from your customer or from the building plans or from whatever, but you need to type this in. Those are very, in, very important information just like the building height, the roof pitch and all that, because this will change up the calculation. So please make sure you type in the right values, just as a little reminder. And for those of you who haven't worked with K2Base already, um, to just make it clear, I don't wanna to go too deep into detail today, but there are tutorials, which you find on the left-hand side right here, um, just two or three minute clips where you can watch this and you will get forward and you will be able to do the planning by yourself. And if you still have questions afterwards, you can always contact us. But as I said, I don't wanna to go too deep into this topic. So you have to type in the values for the roof and then we can continue with the planning. That's what we do right now. First one was a tile roof, I decided. And now we start with the planning of the module array. And here we have the option on choosing between the single rail, solid rail, or the insertion system, just like on the website, what we had here, we click on tile roofing, and then we have the option between single rail, solid rail, and insertion system. So back to base. Today, we are planning with the insertion system, clicks on the module array directly and parallel to the roof. But we have now the option, and I think Karen mentioned this before as well, between portrait and landscape. So we can plan either way. Today, we go with the portrait, regular portrait, edit, and now I have to find my roof first. Scroll a bit out and back in. And with one click on the mouse and another one, I did already the planning for my module array. So now we have five by 14 modules and um, this planned already with the insertion system. We can change it up on the left-hand side, but those are just the information we did type in up front. Next step would be the loads. And as I said, I don't wanna to go too deep into base itself today, but each country has a different setup and a different mask right here. So this is what it looks like when you do plannings in Spain. So first you have to, do about, uh, you have to decide about the wind load. And there is are the different zones. Today we are in Barcelona, so we change to C, the wind load zone C, and it's all already implemented in K2Base. So all you need to do is change up the wind load zone, which is very well explained right here, and the terrain category. And we are today in the city, not on the coast, not somewhere else, but it's all explained right here as well. Then snow, in Spain we don't have that much snow, but we still have to Click on snow load and you see the map will change to green. And now we have the different snow loads. Just by numbers, we can already decide or define which snow load or which category we are in. 
and we are around Barcelona, so it's no load area two. Change this one up and we have already the right value in here. It's in the city, so it's normal terrain. You can also do the pretended terrain, uh, protected terrain if you're really close to other buildings, but we just keep it with the normal one. And well, this just keeps all the information which goes into the calculation and those are very useful and very actually necessary information to type in. So please make sure you read this carefully, type in the right value or the right zone, and then you're good with the calculation. Next step is already the result. So you see it's loading, and this is what it looks like once we are on the result page. Uh, we can zoom a little bit in, and they have a little dark and brighter blue line you see right here. So those lines, I just click on one of them now, turns a little bit reddish. Uh, this is the insertion system, same as this one and this one. And you see, once you click on it, you see actually the length of the insertion system and how it's uh, combined with the 5.10 meter rail and then the last cut of the rail. But then also we have the option to click on the brighter blue line, which is the solid rail in this part, um, the bottom rail, not the upper rail. And also here you see the rail length and which is the combination of the cut of the rail. Then we have, and this was about the question before, we have the option to see how much pressure and load is going onto the module by clicking on the module. And you see we have the load, the ultimate, ultimate limit state and the serviceability is all written in here on the different areas of the roof even. So many, many informations are um, given right here. And it takes a little bit to um, get used to all these values, to all these numbers and uh, different words which are written right here. But I promise once you were working with K2Base a little bit more often, you will get used to it and you can use this information very, very um, well into your planning and into the details. So the last step right here. So as I said before, before we continue, we are here with the roof hooks. What we can do is change between the different roof hooks we, we can use. And then the solid rail light and medium, these are the choices we have. And then also the rail length of the solid rail. This is what we can change in this results page. But then we have done the planning already. I think this is it. We see the fastener right here in a black square. Those are the fasteners. Um, I don't think there are more information needed, yeah, nothing needed to say more, but continuing to the summary. And with the summary, you can see right here now we have planned two roofs. We have done the first one, which is finished. That's why there's nothing, no comment right here. And the second roof, which is not calculated because we haven't done the planning yet. So this is a little remark. It's not calculated, so it's not in the bill of material, for example, or not quite in the calculation. In. But then um, what else, what kind of information we have is which system we were using on which roof, then also which module type we were using, which is actually chosen in a database, which is given. So all you have to do is find the module right in here. This is the database. It's all set up and implemented in K2Base. Um, and then what else? This is the bill of materials. You can download it as an Excel file, makes it easy to just forward it to the, um, forward it to our partners, to our distributors, just forward the Excel file and they know what you need for your project or just for yourself. You can generate the report where all the useful information of this project are written in there as well. Then you have the option, obviously, on saving the project and downloading the file. If you have any questions, you can always download the file, send it to us, send it out to our distributor because they know how it works as well. So if you have questions, send it to them. They can open it and you can talk about the project. Cool. I think this is about it. Second, uh, second roof will come up now if there are no questions. Karen, before I continue, I think I was a bit fast. But before I continue with the second roof, are there any questions up to now? 
Uh, yeah, there's a couple. Um, so there's one about changing from uh, 2D to 3D mode. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, I think now that we're on the roof or now that you're on the roof, that's a good, good time to look at. So yeah, like we don't really have a 3D version of base, would you say, but we do have a satellite version. Maybe satellite that's... version, that's what it's called. It's exactly that way. So once you start planning a roof, you have the map view, which is the satellite view as well. Then you start planning a roof on this page right here, and you have the option on this button right here to change between 2D and satellite view. This is all I'm doing right now is clicking this button. You can scroll in, scroll out. This is the house I was pretending the roof is now a tile roof. Um, also very important information. The buildings you see below right here, they don't come into the calculation. So if you change up the building, I mean, it's very, it's completely north, 90 degrees north to 90 degrees south, and you change the roof a little bit more to the east or west side, that doesn't change anything for the calculation for us. So if you go back to the 2D view, you will have the north arrow right here, but this is just for the calculation, just for your reference. So if you, for example, have a building which, is, which doesn't exist yet, you are able to plan a roof in a section just like this one or in a forest or in a soccer field or whatever you like. So this is just as a reference for you. Okay, uh, Kyron, before I continue talking, is there any other question? <laughs> um, no, I think, but just on that, I think a really interesting point is if you look at the 14.72 meters here, uh, yeah, I'm if you can compare that to the other view, so like here we're looking directly on top of, and so this distance is 14 meters. Uh, and then if you go to the 2D view, we change, and it, you see now it's 17 meters. 17 meters. That's yeah. because in the 2D view, we only consider the actual roof height. And with the satellite view, we have the calculation in with the 30 degrees roof pitch. That's why it just shows if you see it from the top, from the satellite view, we only have 14.72, but the actual size of the roof, the actual length of the side is 17 meters right here. Yeah. Okay, Very thanks for that. good information. Um, and there was one other one on, well, it's not directly related to this, but while we're in roofing, while we're looking at the roof itself, Mm -hmm. uh, there was a question on how we would uh, do like a, a hip roof or a, a four-sided house. I don't know if oh. do you know what I mean by hip roof? Is that um, fortunately, the uh, hip roof is not possible to plan yet. But if you want to plan four sides of a roof, you have to do the square ones. If it's a, a tile roof or a gable roof, for example, just, just any gable roof, and you have to plan each side separate. So don't do the planning with like, let's say for example, we wanna have both sides with modules. So don't do the planning and just draw the roof over both sides because there are different areas, roof zones. So I can actually show this in the result page. You see right now, this is the corner left and corner right of the roof. We are in the red area right here, where are the loads, especially the snow loads are a bit higher. So if you draw the whole roof over both sides, you only have one of these areas. And if you have your module array in this area, you need to have more fastener. And if you have the same, it's similar on the other side, but there is not the red area on the top left then, you will have not enough fasteners and this could be very dangerous. Was it clear, Kyron? I think so, yeah. Um, and just another point to that, I know our, our software team and our digital team are working on this, uh, on this topic because yeah, it is a question we get regularly. Um, so yeah, Godfrey, thank you very much for that question. That was a, was a good one and very useful information. And, and Roman, that was a yeah, really good explanation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I would continue to we, hurry we, up we, a little bit with the second roof. It doesn't look much different, but um, this was a tile roof. I want to continue with the trapezoidal sheet. So we continue with this now, and then we come back to the question round. Is this good? 
Yep. All right. So we go back to the roof section right here. And as I said before, I did plan the second roof already with all the information. Have the roof right here and go to the design page. And now you see it's a bit different. We decided to have a trapezoidal sheet. So we have the option between all our systems for trapezoidal sheet. And here it pops up the insertion system coming up as a whole different or a whole, yeah, whole different system compared to multi-rail because Kyron was showing, don't get confused, Kyron was showing the multi-rail before, but if you only want to plan the multi-rail system, you have to click this button. If you want to plan the insertion system, don't get confused, click the multi-rail and you don't find the insertion system to choose from. You have to choose it right up front here. And then um, as an example now, we can go with the landscape orientation before we did the portrait and add the same what we did before with the module array. Draw it up. Now we have a six by, six by four module array and continue with the loads. Again, we are in the zone D, terrain category three. And for the snow load, we also change this to zone number two. And there we go to the result page. This is it already. And as you see here, the fastener, they don't look similar to the one to the roof before because we had black squares, which was a roof hook. And here, the rails, the rails which are going vertically, they're going perpendicular to this one. They are just very short, just like the real multi rails are. So it looks quite, it looks quite the same like you have it in, the, in real life. You have it on the roof, you have here your crest the different crests, so you can even count which crest you need to put the, fi the fixation on, the, the fastener, and then you have horizontally, you go with the insertion system. Everything above the bottom rail is just the same. Depend it doesn't matter which rail you're using, so solid rail or the multi-rail. But I think Kyron was showing, was just showing it with the samples even better than I can show in base. Okay, I think now we have the second roof. We are able here to click also, of course, on the rail itself to see what the length with the small one as well. It just shows which type of multi-rail we have. Still able to click on the module to see which pressure and which uh, forces are coming onto the module. And then we are able to change up the view. If we wanna show just, for example, we wanted to see just the rails, just the modules, no rails, no roof zones. We can just change this up, whatever we like to have it, and maybe to show it to the customer. So I think um, this was it from my side. Here, this is the last page. If he has written everything is in order, you're good. You're good to go. You get the certification. You get the um, you get you get pretty much the certification with the the report. This is um, pretty much also your warranty. Once you build up everything you have right here, then it's the same, same as the, the static report. Cool, if there are no questions, Karen, for the pay to base file, then I would just start with the regular question round. Uh, I think there's just one that we could touch on uh, in the load section. Could you just jump back to that? Of course, yeah. Uh, there was a question about if this is available in uh, every country. Uh, it, like is, preset. it is available in every country, but it looks a bit different in every country. So, in, um, in, in globally, every country or just in Europe? Uh, especially in Europe. I'm not quite sure how it's globally, but um, you have the norm. And if you don't have the norm, um, you can always change it up to the regular euro code right here if it's not possible in the given country you were asking for yeah is this the right question Karen, or is this the answer to the question yeah yeah so i think so this is spain i think so this is all preset as per the spanish standards um exactly. i think if it's not if it's not in there in all the countries it's something that our like our digital team's always working to implement in more countries so 
whenever you see like an update for base or um, if you've, there's like a, an email about it, this is one of the things that might be, might have been implemented. But actually maybe Roman, if you didn't have this, how would you, how would you put in your loads? How would I put in the loads right now, right here? Yeah, like is there a manual override or is, do you, are you set? Well, basically? yes, you can, you can change it here to manually. Ah, perfect. This is just very, the input, you can just change it up from zone, which is pre-selected right in front here, as I said before. And if there is no zone right here, you're always able to change it up and set it up manually. Just like this. Yeah, okay. Well, thanks for that, Mohammed. I hope we answered your question uh, there. All right, then. Um, yeah, we do have a few other questions, but they're not necessarily base related. So um... okay, then I'll just stop sharing my screen, and I think uh, we are happy to receive the questions now. We can even um, talk to you directly once you raise your hand, your visual hand, of course, <laughs> uh, the virtual hand. Um, we are able to um, unblock the the microphone. If there are more questions, Karen, what else, what kind of questions were there before? You there said there were some questions, some more questions, which are not base related. Yeah. Um, is there something else we have to talk about? Uh, not, not specifically that uh, you need to be here, but um, so if, if you would like to go, I know you're really busy at the moment. So if you'd like to go, I might leave you to it, um, but because I can answer the rest. All right. Um, so thank you very much for, yeah, thanks very much for your time today. Um, yeah, it's been great, been great, uh, great little expose of what we can do online. And yeah, it's always good to, to work with you. So thank you. Okay. Thanks everyone for listening. Thanks uh, for attending all the time at the webinars. I hope you liked it again. And I hope to see you next time. I'll leave you to Karen. I hope you guys had fun and see you later. Yeah. Thanks, Bye everyone. everyone. Uh, so yeah, we had a couple of questions about uh, the advantages um, and so aesthetics is probably the big one uh, it's looks a lot nicer um, but there are also a few practical advantages as well so as i said there is more space that the rail is touching the module and so the, the force distribution from the module onto the rail is a bit higher um, so this can be you have less of a point load um, but also the installation speed so once it's set up perhaps you have quite um, and I may have to have a bit of a break between installation of the, the, the rails and then your modules arriving you know, a couple of days later. Uh, it's really easy and quick to get back up there. You also don't need to go up to put the modules in and then go up again with your tools to drill and sorry, to drill to screw in the clamps. Uh, so it's installation of the modules themselves are a little bit quicker. And one other minor detail, it's not often that it's the case but sometimes you're very limited to the space you have for whatever reason um, you uh, perhaps can only get six modules in but you don't have room for clamps so in that case do you could due to the system being able the modules being able to sit actually right next to each other but if we can get a close-up um, we're able to put them right up against each other so over a course of maybe 20 modules Usually you would have a clamp in there, perhaps a little bit wider. Uh, so you have 20 of or 19 of these spaces, it builds up a little bit. So in like a, a much longer row, it can be an issue um, if you are limited to space, but that's a really sort of specific case and not necessarily something that you may all face. One other question was about facades. And so facade being directly 90 degrees here. Uh, so, it can, like the material can hold. Um, however, we have no statical proof or our software haven't, hasn't done any, we haven't done any testing on that something. And so our software cannot give a statical proof. Uh, so on a case by case basis, it may be suitable. However, uh, you'll need to contact us directly and we will have to go through uh, and calculate for the specific loads, for the material that is required uh, for how high the building is. There's quite a few things to take into consideration. Uh, so yes, um, but not something you can plan either. I think those are the questions we had open when I last I looked, um, and I don't know if we have any hands up. So, 
oh, a question about the price. Uh, it looks more expensive than the single rail. Yes, so price is an issue. Um, I think in the webinar earlier, we had a German webinar, we did this come up, 50%? 30 to 50, it depends on the, um, on the project itself, also yeah. the full fasteners and so on. Um, but um, let's say you can mix up the costs in the whole system costs. Um, not, it's not everything about the model. So yeah, so um, I, my, my backup support here, uh, Tillman and Klaus were always very helpful. Uh, they had a webinar earlier today and this question came up and uh, the discussion there was depending on the system, uh, depending on uh, the amount of Fastener. So here we have quite, you know, there's two, oh, there's four fixations. So this is quite a lot, but for the different systems, it'll be a little bit different. But the price can be up to, or between 20, sorry, 30 and 50% more than a standard system. Uh, so this will differ case by case, um, but it will be a little bit more expensive. Uh, so Jeremy, I hope that has answered your question. Live. And did we have, I don't think we have any more hands up. Okay, uh, thank you very much everyone for joining. Um, just before we go, I'd like to make a comment if for the customers that we do have. So if you are already a K2 customer and have been impacted by deliveries in the last uh, month or so, maybe two months, uh, we apologize for this. It's something we are working on uh, daily. Um, you might've seen information on our um, special ops team, our dev ops team and they are working uh, to kind of get through the backlog that we have, but also the influx of orders. And, and this is something you may be aware of as well. The uh, solar industry, especially in Europe, is uh, growing almost exponentially at the moment. Uh, so there's big supply, or so big demand, sorry. Um, and then on the other side, raw materials, uh, there's a big, or there's a shortage of supply on aluminium at the moment. So we're at a bit of a point where we have quite high demand and we're unable to get from the bottom. So this is something we're working um, very hard to catch back up. Apologies if your order has been affected and if you have had a delay in your, uh, in an order confirmation or a delivery, um, but we do ask for your patience and um, apologize again for that. If you haven't been affected, great, even better. Uh, you can ignore the last 30 seconds and Thank you very much for being here. So uh, thanks to the viewers, Roman, who was here before, Klaus and Tillman, they're, um, they're the guys that make this happen. Thanks to you, obviously, for participating. We appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions that come to you later, feel free to email us. Tomorrow or maybe later in the week, you'll get a email with some of the information that we spoke about today. Just a bit of a um, refresher. It might be a link to our upcoming webinars. So not next week, but the week after, we'll be starting a new series of webinars on all of our more basic systems, or maybe not basic, but more regular systems. So flat roofs, uh, hanger bolts, uh, sorry, tile roofs, trapezoidal sheeting roofs, corrugated roofs, going through some of the equipment in a bit more detail. So if you had more questions about these, the, hang, uh, the oh, roof tiles, <laughs> tile hooks, um, we'll go through, through a lot more detail. Um, feel free to sign up for them, um, access, sorry, you can find all that on our website, and but also in our newsletter. So if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, it's a great place to get the information as well. Uh, there's a lot of rambling, so I apologize for that. Thanks again for joining us. Um, if we don't see each other again, good luck planning solar. And if not, we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you very much. Bye.